Brett Favre and the Minnesota Vikings to take on the New Orleans Saints. The winner goes on to Super Bowl 44. It's the NFC Championship game. Now it's time to play football. Marstead drills it into the end zone. And the Vikings will start at their 20. The number five rated offense during the regular season put up 323 yards on the Dallas Cowboys last week and they are led on the field by Brett Favre. The 40 year old quarterback played college football at Southern Miss and grew up in Mississippi Kiln Mississippi as a Saints fan protected by that group up front. Favre starts with a throw and it's incomplete for Shanko. The Vikings players on offense are wearing earplugs to try and limit the noise they're dealing with on the field. And the first play of the game here you got Brett Favre who's taking a hit right off the edge there. Another throw. Klein Saucer with the catch and he's forward for a first down. 11 yards for Jim Klein Saucer and the first completion from Brett Favre. Here's the defense and in the words of their coordinator Greg Williams we're not dominant enough with our front seven to be a great defense without takeaways and what we do in the red zone. This was the number two team taking the ball away during the regular season. That's why I think Will Smith is going to have to have an impact in this ball game in getting pressure on Brett Favre. He had an excellent regular season. He needs to have a big game here today. He wears number 91. Quick throw. Percy Harvin, the rookie. Good for five. Shanley out there to make the stop for the New Orleans Saints. And you see that wristband there that Brett Favre is wearing. He's not worn a wristband at any point this season. And he's not going with it. They're using the quarterback coach communication device, but there are times when it gets so loud, they've been told in their scouting reports that they may not be able to communicate properly. If that's the case, the coaches would then signal the play, and Favre would read it off his wristband. Another throw that's four to start the day and it's burying for another Vikings first down. You know, pretty interesting coming into this game Joe I know in visiting with some of the coaches with Minnesota really anticipated that they would run the ball early with Adrian Peterson. In fact when Chris Myers was talking to Brad Childers there before the game you know, he said hey we're going to be balanced they've been anything but. Now they've got an empty backfield. With Chester Taylor in the game. Play clock was at five and here's Berrien with a catch hit immediately but Bernard Berrien was brought down right at the marker might be in short looks to be Porter and Fujita were there to make the stop and it will be second down and short. Well, I think you see Brett Favre and he was able to signal to the outside and you know, the offensive lineman up front they're all holding their their spot they're not moving not flinching handling crowd noise here early very very well. Handoff is to Percy Harvin and the rookie gets a big hit after he picks up a first down and a gain of eight. So the first run of the day isn't in the arms of Adrian Peterson instead it's the 21 year old out of the University of Florida. Well, they're able to just go off tackle with him and we've seen Percy Harvin come into the backfield and get the handoff. A good run there on his part but he's such a versatile player and they they just want the ball in his hands however they can do that and he gets a good run with that one 40 yard drive to this point Percy Harvin said he was 100 percent healthy during the warm ups here's a screen for Chester Taylor pretty well played by Fujita a gain of four very little on the ground and so far the only carry for Percy Harvin. I know Greg Williams the defensive coordinator there for the New Orleans Saints you know in visiting with him a lot of times in a game like this you talk about what a play caller wants to do for the quarterback to let him settle in 
But Greg Williams talked about the calls that he wanted to make defensively. He said he referred to them as settling calls. He wanted his defense to not have to do anything to where he felt they might get exposed early in this game. Second down and six. Over the middle. Pass is caught by Peterson. And Adrian Peterson is to the 25. Eighth play of the drive is an 11-yard throw to Adrian Peterson. Greer made the tackle. And this has been a very good start offensively for the Vikings here on the road. You know, a lot of times in a big game, Brett Favre comes in and he, his adrenaline is flowing so much that he's, he's very erratic throwing the football. And I think he's shown good patience, especially on that last play. Nothing down the field. He comes underneath to the check down to Adrian Peterson. Delayed handoff. It's Adrian Peterson. And a good run on first down of six. Jabari Greer made the stop. A fake throw, a delayed handoff by Brett Favre. And now the Vikings are inside the red zone. And this, as Drew Brees can only sit and watch, and his offense is kept off the field here with over five minutes gone in the opening quarter. This was the second best defense in the NFL inside the red zone. Second and four. Peterson again. How about Adrian Peterson and the Vikings with an opening drive touchdown. He went around sharper and takes it in for the first points of the evening. You're going to see Darren Sharper. He drops down in, and Jim Kleinsaucer, Darren Sharper is going to drop in here, but Jim Kleinsaucer in motion does a good job there of getting Will Smith up the field and then attacking the safety there and allowing Adrian Peterson to get outside and in the end zone. 19 yard carry for Peterson. It was the arm of Brett Favre and short throws that got him into position, and then they handed it to Adrian. Adrian Peterson. Touched it last on that drive. Ten plays, 80 yards, five and a half minutes. And now, with this place finally quiet where you can hear yourself think, the Saints will get it as Longwell kicks it away. Courtney Roby, one of the better kick returners in the league, from inside the five. Gets to the 20, is spun around, and they will mark him down inches shy of the 24. This crowd will quiet down and Sean Payton will try and call the plays for Drew Brees to take his Saints down the field. Top scoring offense in the league and they start with a throw no surprise. Lance Moore with a catch he's good for five yards knocked out by Benny Sapp. And if you don't know about this Saints offense they are the best in the NFL. And there's the day last week for Drew Brees who's Saints and here's a no huddle approach by New Orleans. Fell behind 7 0 last week to the Arizona Cardinals and then took over. Play action from Breeze. Down the middle of the field, now to the sideline and out of the reach of Marcus Colston. It'll be third down and five. Well, they talked about it the other day, Joe, and coming into this ball game, they, they know that they've got a rookie middle linebacker, Jasper Brinkley. Starting for the Minnesota Vikings. He took the place of E.J. Henderson when he went down. And at times, Jasper Brinkley can get lost in coverage. And they want to give him a lot of different looks. They want to make him make the checks when they break the huddle or when they're at the line of scrimmage and try to confuse him into making some bad calls defensively. Here's the throw to Meacham. Has a blocker in front of him and fights for a first down. Had the tight end David Thomas out in front. Thomas. Made the key block and Meacham has seven yards and a first down. Here's the offense for New Orleans. And it all centers around Drew Brees, who is a machine in his preparation and the way he spreads the football around. And we talk a lot about Drew Brees and we talk a lot about those skill players as we should. That offensive line has been outstanding all year with three Pro Bowlers going to or next week going to. Miami. Here's one down the middle for Colston. He spins and catches it for 13 yards and a first down. Greenway and Brinkley were there well, for good, Minnesota. Good pocket inside. You're going to see Colston. They try to reroute him a little bit, but he's able to push up and he gets in there 
just off of Ben Lieber's reach. And Drew Brees, he sets in there and, and makes a nice throw and a nice catch as well by Marcus Colson. The one thing that that probably these receivers do as well as anybody in the league is make some difficult catches on the back shoulder when they've got to turn and twist. First carry of the day, and it's Pierre Thomas who had a good year. He gets nine. Thomas, who had a career high 793 yards rushing during the regular season for a team, and it may surprise you, the sixth best in the NFL running the football. A couple of all pros up front on the defensive line. There are the linebackers with the rookie in the middle and the secondary with Sapp starting on the outside and a lot of Antoine Winfield on the inside, the Pro Bowl cornerback. Second and two. Pat Williams come on down. Defense encroachment. Five yard penalty step. There's over the play is the first step. Well, they're going to be able to use hard count. Yeah, that's something that Dallas wasn't able to use last week on the road. And, you know, of course, it's it sure helps those offensive linemen out up front when you're able to use it. And I know Drew Brees is going to come up oftentimes he's going to use double cadence. And what that means is he's going to go through the cadence initially he wants to determine whether they're in zone or man. Here's Henderson just off his right hand. Got behind Benny Sapp. You can see Pat Williams Troy get push up the middle. He came across early on the completion to Colston. You saw Kevin Williams get his hand up. They want to rush up the middle. And try to get in the face of Drew Brees, who might be six feet tall, trying to deal with those big bodies up front. I think that's what that's what happened last week, is they got great pressure off the edge with Ray Edwards and Jared Allen. But was what hurt Dallas the most in that ball game was the inability to step up in the pocket because of the inside push that you talk about. Here's a screen. That's Thomas, and Pierre has a lane down the sideline, still going. How about this start? Touchdown, Saints. Offensive line Jari Evans who made the Pro Bowl this year and all pro right guard does a great job of timing and getting out in front of Pierre Thomas you see the knockdown right there on Benny Sapp and then at that point some poor tackling and a touchdown New Orleans converted a big third down on that drive on a screen to Thomas and then Pierre good for 38 yards and it's 7 7. First opening possession drive touchdown this season against the Minnesota Vikings, and it's Pierre Thomas. And Morstead will kick it to Percy Harvin. A knuckler. Harvin on a bounce. Lost his footing. Across the 25. First down. Favre airs it out. Burying down the sideline. It's out of his reach. All that being said, Troy, Brett Favre is 17 and 1 in his last 18 games in a dome. And what strikes me from that soundbite is how tired he looks. I mean, he just looks worn out and he looked extremely rested off the bye week going into the Dallas game last week. That's been a long year for him, as we well know. I mean, he's played better than anyone could have imagined. You, know, you talk about the crowd noise. It was Brett Favre who for, first wore earplugs when he was with Green Bay and had to go play at the Metrodome. And it was his suggestion this week that then led to other players going with the earplugs in this game. Favre throws and incomplete for Sidney Rice. Sidney Rice, who had a huge day last week against the Cowboys, six catches, 141 yards. And three receiving touchdowns, and he really burst onto the scene here in 2009 with 83 catches and over 1,300 yards. Well, pretty interesting here. You know, last week the Arizona Cardinals come out, first play, 70 yard touchdown, New Orleans answered. Minnesota goes down in this game, first possession, touchdown, Adrian Peterson. They come back and answer. They blow the play dead. 
Pass incomplete. Favre ends up on the ground. Nobody can hear the whistle down there, and it's an offside against the Saints. Defense unabated for the quarterback. 93. Five yard penalty still. Third down. They blow the play dead to protect the quarterback, but because it's so loud and nobody can hear the whistle, Favre still ended up on the ground. And that's a real problem, and Roman Harper is going to be the guy who comes off the edge right there, the safety who got the lick then in on, on Brett Favre. He told us the other day that he took a big hit on the touchdown last week to Sidney Rice, the first touchdown throw, and his entire right side was purple all week long. I mean the fact we take it for granted that he plays each and every week because he's never missed a game but doing that at 40 years old I, I think that's the one thing that people haven't appreciated enough third and five incomplete penalty flag comes in holding number 20 of the defense five yard penalty automatic first down Randall Gay starts banging on Percy Harvin right off the line of scrimmage try to keep him from get, getting up the field and you see that he's engaged well beyond the five yards and with the ball in the air. Back to back Saints penalties allow the Vikings to convert on third down they didn't face a third down their first possession. So well they moved it. Quick throw Barian. What a move. Went right around Porter and is still going into Saints territory. Good for 15 yards. <laughs> and Berrien showed his quickness. That was a, a Dwight Freeney move right there. I mean, put his foot in the ground and uh, made Tracy Porter come up with nothing but air. It's a heck of a job. I know Bernard Berrien, for a guy who was such a big part, a big play guy last year as a free agent, hasn't had the year this year that he had hoped for, one of the few. But he's handled it very well. Nice play there. Third catch for Barry, and now they hand it to Percy Harvin. Harvin got around Charleston, game two. And Brett Favre again took another hit and is just now getting off the field, getting up off the field as he walks back into the huddle. Well, Bobby McCray, you're going to see him right here. The left side. I mean, he just comes up, and Favre was working that way to make the handoff then to Percy Harvin, and you know he decides Percy he's going to get a shot. Hitting a player out of bounds. Number 93 is the defense. 15 yard penalty. First down. They threw that flag well after the play, and it's a personal foul against Bobby McCray for hitting a player out of bounds. So after all the replays, and when the players were, let's take a look. I don't know if it happened after that, away from that, but the flag came down awfully late, and the 15 yard penalty takes it all the way to the New Orleans 31. <laughs> Hand off to Peterson. What a good tackle by Sharper. What a year for Darren Sharper, his first year with the Saints. When you go back to that last play, Joe, and the, and the penalty, it, it, it was on McCray on the hit on Favre. I mean, they said it was on McCray with the runner well out of bounds, but this is what the call was right there. And the flag came in late, but the flag was thrown right there where Favre was laying. And so the official there, he just he just called it wrong, but that's the penalty. It was on Bobby McCray on the late hit on Favre. Second and seven. Favre rolls to his right, throws it for Harvin, incomplete. Third down and seven. Pretty good route by Percy Harvin, and just by defensive alignment, he's going to get open. Once he pushes him to the inside, you see Tracy Porter, he's playing inside technique. You've got the throw then to Harvin, and Favre, he, he's, he knows he missed one, but I, I think he's a little banged up off of that hit there to Bobby McCray. Been hit four times, it's third and seven.
Favre stands in, gets a hit, finds Percy Harvin, who's down inside the 10, and Favre got drilled again. Yeah, and it's Darren Sharper again. They're getting him around the line of scrimmage. We saw Roman Harper, the other safety, come as well. But Darren Sharper is trying to disguise coverage, and he's hitting it on the run. And you're going to see him come in late, right, as Favre lets go of the ball and a clean hit. So you're right, Joe. They've gotten some knockdowns on Brett Favre, and, and they knew they were going to have to do that. They're going to have to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. Favre's hanging in there, but you know that you get hit like that enough times, you start rushing your throws as a quarterback. That's Peterson. Well played by this Saints defense. Brett Favre on that completion to Harvin now with 461 career postseason completions. That's the all time record. Just broke the mark formerly held by Joe Montana. Meanwhile, Greg Williams, a defensive coordinator of the Saints, they were trying to hit and hit hard the 38 year old Kurt Warner last week. And they're trying to hit, hit high and hard on the 40 year old. Brett Favre here today. Well, Greg Williams learned under Buddy Ryan, and one thing Buddy Ryan did, and he did it a lot, was hit the quarterback. And that's what Greg Williams is doing here today. Harvin. Lodeholt couldn't get out there, and Harvin gets only one. Yeah, that's one of the important things for New Orleans, is being able to make the tackle once the receiver makes the catch. Good stop there. They give up the quick pass, but a lot of what Minnesota likes to do, if you play off coverage on a guy like Percy Harvin, Favre's going to get it into his hands immediately, and then you've got to be able to make the tackle, otherwise you're giving up a big play. Third down and goal. Pump fake. Touchdown Minnesota Sidney Rice his fourth of this postseason a five yard touchdown throw from number four and the Minnesota Vikings take it right back down the field to regain the lead. Well they go with the trip set you're going to see Sidney Rice just come in here and hook up and they're playing zone New Orleans is and he's just able to work right in there behind the linebacker you see the window that Brett Favre sees and he puts it right on his chest pretty easy touchdown there for Minnesota. Now Longwell makes it 14 to 7. Brett Favre has taken some shots in this game but he keeps getting up like he has throughout his entire 19 year career Two 10 play drives. Three Saints penalties on that last possession for Minnesota, covering 25 yards and a couple of first downs. And for Brett Favre, his 44th career postseason touchdown pass. Here's Roby on the return, and Courtney Roby fights his way across the 25. 17 yard return for Roby and here's the penalty on Randall Gay yeah, and this is what kept that drive alive which then set up the touchdown you see the hold there on Gay on Harvin and a good call there by the official and then here's the route again by Sidney Rice he's able then to get in behind Scott Shanley he did a little sharper shake there of his own Shanko has been saving that one if he gets a touchdown today and you know here's Favre. I mean obviously he's taken a, a lot of hits and you can see him right there he's taking some hits underneath the chin all clean. But that takes its toll. They were looking at his chin, at his jaw on the sideline. Looks to be all right. And here is Pierre Thomas. What a good play made by Greenway, Kevin Williams, and a loss of one. You know, I say all clean, all clean except for the the, the penalty that they called there on on Bobby McRae. Another hurry up approach. No huddle for the Saints as they get right back to the line. Reggie Bush in motion. He hasn't been involved yet. They reverse it to him, and Reggie Bush has got a lot of ground to cover to get back to the line of scrimmage. He gets to the 26, and at the end of the day, that's where he took it to the line of scrimmage, and it's third and 11. And after all that, they're they're lucky that all they did was lose a yard because there was a lot of things happening there and Jared Allen was in the backfield and had an opportunity to make the play and he failed to but it looked like a disaster right from the beginning. You know, Cedric Griffin their corner he got a shot in on Drew Brees you know, right over on the sideline 
you know, once a quarterback gets out and he's in blocking, they're trying to help them get him on the edge. And they, they, they're going to take their shots on him like New Orleans has on far. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Third down and 11. Breeze, Colston, short of the first down. They're going to mark him at the 36. And with a game clock continuing to wind, It'll be fourth down and a punt coming from the Saints. You know, Ray Edwards came in last week and had such a big game. And, you know, he's got the knee injury. He's wearing a knee brace today, and they were hoping that that wouldn't slow him down too much. He was hoping to get a holding call there on right tackle John Stinchcomb. But, you know, overall, good protection. You get a completion there on third down. You just didn't get the proper depth there from the receiver to make the completion and pick up the first down. Morstead hits it. Raynon will stay away and the ball will bounce the Saints way toward the Vikings end zone and be tapped at the 15 yard line and now a penalty flag comes in at the end. There's that Vikings defensive front. Minnesota defensively led the NFL with 48 sacks had three takeaways last week against There's Dallas. No foul on the play as a quarter expired prior to the man touching the ball. Fifth NFC Championship game for Brett Favre. Last time he played in one 2007. He's two and two. Handoff is to Adrian Peterson. And Peterson picks up two. There's the shot of Brett Favre on the sideline and the earplugs that Brett is wearing and you can see him inside the helmets of a lot of his offensive linemen. Yeah I know in talking with him he, he didn't feel that it would be any louder here than what it, what it was when he went to Green Bay and played there but he did not wear the earplugs when he went to Green Bay so so clearly in talking with a variety of people you know he was convinced that you know well maybe this was the way to go. Second down and eight delayed handoff Adrian Peterson spins his way just shy of the 20 let's go down to the field and Chris Myers Joe those are purple plastic custom molded earpieces and each offensive lineman opted to wear them Chester Taylor and Adrian Peterson did not and Brian McKinney said that they cut out the high pitch distant noise but they allow hearing in and around you so we can get the signals from our quarterback it's third down and six. Decibel level at 102, which I'm assuming means it's loud. <laughs> Safe to say. Out of the shotgun, Favre steps up and throws it away. Over the head of Chester Taylor, and it's fourth down. So for the first time, the Saints defense. Holds on a third down and forces a Vikings punt. Yeah, and that was big there for New Orleans defensively. I mean, they have not been able to stop Minnesota on the first two possessions of the game. The Saints offensively on the previous possession was unable to match the touchdown. And so this was an important stop for New Orleans. Reggie Bush returned one for a touchdown last week against Arizona, two for a touchdown against Chris Cluey and the Vikings last year. it right for the sideline doesn't get it to the sideline but enough hang time a fair catch Saints have the football and we focus on Jared Allen first team all pro Vikings and their defensive coordinator Leslie Frazier give Jared Allen at times total freedom to go where he needs to go to get to the quarterback at 14 and a half sacks during the regular season breeze throws out of the reach of Jeremy Shockey. Playing with a bad knee and a bad toe, second and ten. And you show Jared Allen, and, and clearly he's got the attention of the New Orleans Saints, and so they're going to do some things to help Bushrod here, the left tackle. This time they have David Thomas there to kind of help, but Jared Allen gets the push there on the inside. Had an opportunity here to Jeremy Shockey, just unable to to make the throw and catch. But I know in visiting with Sean Payton, he thought it was extremely important to help. Jermon Bushrod there on that left side with Jared Allen and he knew that Bushrod was going to be depending on him to make some good calls so they wouldn't be left alone. Fake the toss to Reggie Bush and now it's off the left hand of Thomas. The tight end who was picked up in September from New England. He's been more and more a part of the offense while Shockey 
has been injured. Shockey missed the last three games of the regular season with a toe injury. Hurt his knee last week, a bruised knee against Arizona. And for Jeremy, a guy who was hurt and missed the Giants Super Bowl run in 2007 when he broke his left leg week 15. When there was questions today as to whether or not you know they were comfortable that he would make it through the game but they put down their third tight end so that was an indication to us that they're comfortable that he'll be healthy throughout third down and 10 breeze down the middle has Reggie Bush and a big gain on third and 10 of 28 yards. Well, you're going to see the route here. Marcus Colston is going to clear here, and then you got Reggie Bush here, and they call that the H post. He's running an, a post route there on Ben Lever, the linebacker there in man coverage. And because they're in man, all you have to do then is beat the linebacker, and you've got a chance. But you've got to have protection in order to make that happen. Breeze gets hit late, but overall, because of the timing of the throw, it didn't require great protection. Handoff is to Pierre Thomas. Thomas brought down by Medea Williams after a gain of four. When you think about Reggie Bush, clearly a guy who loves the spotlight. He did when he was at USC, won the Heisman in 2005. He had a big game last week with 217 all purpose yardage on 12 touches and had an 88 yard touchdown reception at Chicago in January of 07 when the Saints. Made it to the NFC Championship game only to lose to the Bears. Well, he's there, Percy Harvin. He's out here wide now. And he can run some wide receiver routes from that position. Breeze over the middle. Thomas. First down at the 21. This time, Jermon Bushrod gets help from the left guard, Carl Nix. Jared Allen has the ability to rush any way he wants. He has no restrictions. If he wants to take an inside release, he has the freedom to do that. They got the help inside, and then they allowed you were talking about David Thomas and what he has meant since the injury to Heath Miller. He's such a versatile guy that when they go with their two tight end packages, you know, sometimes you wonder how exactly you're going to treat him. On first down, Pierre Thomas cuts it back. Sets up first and goal at the nine. 12 yard run by Pierre Thomas. Well, good push along that left side. David Thomas does a good job. And Carl Nix, this was the matchup they felt good about. He's going to get a push here and then a seal here. And you're going to see the lane then that happens for Pierre Thomas. Good execution up front. Right back to the line of scrimmage on first and goal. Take the handoff. Breeze. Corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Devery Henderson. You know, Drew Brees comes back off the play action and initially wants to go to Marcus Colston. Good coverage there. But then you've got Devery Henderson who just keeps working. Benny Sapp is expecting him to continue to the post. He comes off the post route to the corner, and Drew Brees kept it alive. Brees has started 8 of 12 for 120 yards. And the game is tied at 14. Morstead will kick it away with Percy Harvin waiting deep. Another knuckler on a hop. Harvin's going to have to return it. And the rookie is to the 20. About a half a dozen times now, we've seen them bring in Zach Streep and treat him as a tight end, as an extra blocker. They've been running the ball primarily with him when he's been in, and that's why they go off play action. Now, great protection, as you see, the time afforded there to Drew Brees had nothing to do with what happened on the outside. Benny Sapp just lost his man in coverage. But it was a good job by Devery Henderson staying alive. And Drew Brees getting off of his first receiver and finding him in the corner of the end zone. Minnesota had the ball for over 11 minutes and they have it here at their 20. And Favre takes a timeout. 10-22 left in the first half. First down. 
Vikings. Make the handoff to Harvin and now throw it to him. Porter's out there and makes a nice tackle. Gain of six. You go back to the previous play when Favre had to call timeout and, and he's trying to signal and Vasante Shanko actually was hollering out to Bernard Berry and, and telling him he's lined up wrong. Nobody can hear. You know, that's what I, I think Bernard Berry is wearing ear, earplugs too. Because <laughs> he couldn't hear. Second and four. Fake the handoff to Taylor and now throw it to Chester Taylor. Nice play by Minnesota and the Vikings pick up a first down across the 35 and 11 yard catch and run by Chester Taylor. On first down that's Rice and a nice catch. He knew he was going to get popped and Sidney Rice stuck the hands out made the catch and got the hit from Jabari Greer. See Jabari Greer there on Sidney Rice. You're right. I mean, and that thing had some velocity on it too. I mean, the one thing that we do know from Brett Favre over the years is that it doesn't matter how close you are to him in the route. He's going to turn it loose about as hard as he can throw it. That's good hands. Pretty good. There were some pregame shows talking about Sidney Rice's hands today. That was a that was a good example of them. Here's Peterson left side. Had a lane, and Adrian Peterson brought down near the marker. By Darren Sharper depends on the spot. And it's either first down at third and inches and. It's close looks like he's got it according to our line which is obviously unofficial. Yeah I think Adrian Peterson is running extremely hard. I didn't sense this last week covering that game but this this is what we're accustomed to seeing from. From Adrian Peterson you see the collision there I mean he lowers his shoulder a little bit like what Reggie Bush was doing a week ago in that game against Arizona but a good finishing run there by Adrian Peterson. So a first down for the Vikings and we look at their offensive leaders. Been nine runs so far. For the Minnesota Vikings compared to 18 passes so a two to one ratio. Brad Childress lied to Chris Myers before the. Kickoff they haven't been balanced but. <laughs> They're throwing the football a lot and Brett Favre's taking some hits and he's moving the Vikings again. Yeah I, I didn't really expect though Brad Childers to tip his hand right before kickoff. Good try though Chris. The pump fake and that's Adrian Peterson and a good play is made by Shanley. Peterson to midfield. And, and I think that that's. You know really what Brett Favre has done a great job of I mean if you look at Adrian Peterson and his receptions in his first couple of seasons he has more this year than those two years combined and most of them are just of that variety I mean it's just Brett Favre not getting anything down the field and coming down and checking it underneath and you know that's one of the big reasons why he only had seven interceptions in the regular season. Second and seven here is Peterson. Little hurdle along the way, picked up three. Will Smith there to make the stop. We talked about it last week, Troy, that Favre said for the first time in his career, he doesn't feel like he has to score every time he touches the ball. That might be different in this game, but a reason why he hasn't forced it a lot this season. Yeah, it, and it is different in this game because he said, you know, hey, no matter how many points we may be up at any point in the game, it is the Saints. And they led the league in scoring, so you never can quite get comfortable. Third down and four. Blitz coming. Vikings pick it up, and the pass out of the reach of Berrien. Fourth down. So the Vikings took it to the Saints side of midfield, but the drive stalls, and it's fourth down. Now you go back to that ball game last week and what New Orleans was able to do one they were able to create takeaways but but they were also able to get off the field on third down last week only one third down converted by Arizona that was a nice job by that defense getting off the field there in a pretty manageable third down and distance for Minnesota. Punt by Cluey. Bush will stay away and it'll be down inside the 20. 
Saints set up in their huddle. They have abandoned the huddle quite a bit in this first half, trying to keep the tempo fast against this Vikings defense. Brett Favre will go over the pictures on the sideline. First down, New Orleans. Fake the toss. Breeze throws incomplete for Henderson. They had a touchdown the last time the Saints had it. Drew talked about the importance of, of being productive and having positive plays there on first down so you're not caught in third and longs against this pass rush and you know that was a missed opportunity on that on that last play they had it blocked up actually pretty good and we're going to get some pretty good yards off of it had they been able to make, make that catch. Tackle. Bushrod. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 93 jumped into the neutral zone, causing the offense to start. Five yard penalty, second down. Both Edwards and Kevin Williams moved. They get Kevin Williams. And that's what forced the false start by Bushrod. Well, and I think that's that's just smart quarterback in there by Drew Brees because as, as I was saying, all of a sudden you have the drop pass there on first down. You want to try to get some of that back, and so one of the ways you do that then against an over aggressive defensive front is you snap count. You're already backed up. You don't like using snap count as much when you're in your own red zone, but when you're backed up, it's okay, and they get an easy five yards. Now second and five. Breeze looking for somewhere to go. Throws low. Pass caught. That's David Thomas. He's about a yard shy of a first down. Third down coming up. Yeah, Dave Thomas is having a heck of a game here in this first half. He's been, you know, real instrumental in uh, in the protection and the blocking, and and he's also done a good job of, of making some good catches. So third and one. And then they come back in with the, the extra offensive lineman here, 64, Zach Streif, which is not surprising because it's third and one, but throughout this first half, they've used him on first and second downs. That's Lionel Hamilton who gets it, and he gets whacked by Pat Williams. Jasper Brinkley, actually, the middle linebacker, a loss of one. And so on third and one, the Saints go backward, and there's the rookie, Brinkley, who's making his sixth consecutive start, and he hit Lionel Hamilton hard. Yeah, the guy who kind of created some some problems up front was, was Ray Edwards, and then Brinkley came in and finished it off. So Morstead will punt it, and Ray Nod will wait for it. Good punt. Fair catch. Hauled in just inside the 25. He is a Saints fan on any other night but tonight. Well, uh, his wife was saying that she's been receiving phone calls from from friends, not knowing you know who they should root for. <laughs> so that pretty much tells you the allegiances to the Saints. Here is Chester Taylor. And Chester Taylor works that into a three yard carry. His wife Deanna, who he met at Hancock North, she is here and, according to Brett, was in tears for two days this week. She said the year has just been so great. She doesn't want it to end, but with the stress involved with this game, she's just worn out. Well, the one time, I mean, you come back and out of retirement and you're playing and you're expected to do a lot of great things and you do that, and then you find yourself in the championship game against the you know your favorite team as a kid and against a team that has never made it to the Super Bowl. Peterson at the top of the formation far down the middle guns it incomplete for Visanti Shenko. Vilma the middle linebacker was down there in coverage. And that will bring up third down. Yeah, that's that Tampa two coverage and Jonathan Vilma the middle linebacker he then has to carry the tight end up the middle of the field and. You know, he just turned around just in time. Didn't know the ball had been thrown. Pretty tight fit there for Favre to try to put that one in. Threw his fastball, came up empty, third and seven. Low snap. Favre. Throws incomplete for Percy Harvin. And it's fourth down. So now 
now these two defenses starting to settle in a bit and a punt coming from the Vikings and you see how they're playing Percy Harvin right now get physical with him at the line of scrimmage Randall Gay does that they got pressure on far from Shanley but I think Greg Williams has got to feel pretty good right now they weathered the storm early gave up some big drives 14 points but since then they've been able to make stops without creating takeaways and that's what they were most concerned about coming into this game. Bluey will punt it. That far started 10 of 14. He's gone four of his last eight and a fair catch called for by Reggie Bush. First down for New Orleans at their own 33. Breeze good protection down the middle nearly picked off by Lieber. Ben Lieber who had an interception against the Dallas Cowboys last week got his hands on it couldn't pull it in. But Ben Lieber had a heck of a day last week no question he had the, the big interception that you talk about and you know both these linebackers we talked earlier about Jasper Brinkley and him being a rookie but Ben Lieber and then Chad Greenway they're they're about as athletic as as there is at that linebacker position and they're playmakers too and Ben Lieber because of the injury to E.J. Henderson is playing a lot more than he was because he's involved in their nickel packages over the middle there's Shockey the yard shot of a first down on that previous play Lieber got his hands on it he had no way of knowing what was going on behind him as Shockey gets up limping with that bruised knee and bad toe but Tyrell Johnson was waiting for the interception Lieber is the one that knocked it away and now it's third down and about a yard and a half. Coming up on three minutes left in the half. Tie game. That's push in motion. They toss it to Reggie Bush. Cuts back. Pat Williams got his hands on him first. And he is brought down short of first down yardage. Joe I'm a little surprised by that call to be honest with you think back to last week Dallas ran that exact same play they did run it to Jared Allen side they picked up the first down later in the game they tried running it again and they didn't get anything out of it but they come back with it trying to get it and Minnesota does a good job but you've got New Orleans lined up as if they're going to as if they're going to go for it with a ball at just outside their own 43 going forward to trying to draw the Vikings offside and that's what they were trying to do it almost happened so two minutes seven seconds left in the half and Minnesota about to get the ball back both of these teams seem to have settled in particularly on defense it was a late flag throw the two minute warning we're at the two minute warning and they threw the flag for delay of game. We'll take you through that last sequence when the Saints were eventually flagged for delay of game. Right now, here's the punt by Morstead with Raynaud waiting for him. More of a line drive punt and a fair catch is called for by Raynaud, who comes up with a ball and they're going to throw a flag. It's a muffed fair catch and he's on the ground trying to get the ball and then there's the hit by Jonathan Casillas a rookie personal foul. Number 52, 52, 15 yard penalty, first down. You know it's hard on these guys sometimes I, they blew the whistle and he apparently did not hear it and he sees the ball on the ground and Ray not going to pick it up. And I don't think he meant anything by it but. As the rule reads, probably a good call. Second personal foul on the Saints. The best starting field position because of it for Minnesota. Tie game. And the throw is behind Sidney Rice. Let's go back to that fourth down with the Saints trying to draw the Vikings offside on fourth down and less than a yard. Kevin Williams came awfully close to making contact. Play clock winding down, and just about simultaneously, Breeze calls for the timeout. They gave him the timeout back, took the five yard penalty, and Kevin Williams breathes a sigh of relief. And so that's, you know, you lose five yards there, you lose 15 yards on the personal foul there on Jonathan Casillas. I mean, those are big yards. 
And off is to Adrian Peterson, and that's well played by Vilma. A gain of only one. And third down and nine coming up for the Vikings. You know, Vilma, who's had a really good year and has fit in well with this Saints team, and you know, they do a pretty good job up front of keeping offensive linemen off of them, and they did there, and it allowed him to run freely then to Adrian Peterson and put on a pretty good hit. Sharper comes on a blitz. Favre throws for Barry, and what a throw before he came out of his break. And the completion for a first down in front of Jabari Greer. Good throw by Brett Favre. Good, good throw under duress because they're able to get Darren Sharper in his face. Greg Williams dials it up. He's going to come here to, to Favre's front side, but he turns it loose with great anticipation to the outside. And, and Bernard Berrien makes one of those catches that we've seen from from Sidney Rice throughout the season a contested throw but a, a well played ball four catches for Barry and 43 yards Barb slings it out of the reach of Sidney Rice second and ten delayed handoff Peterson good play by Roman Harper a gain of only one. Harper is the strong safety who was up to make the tackle. Well, they have definitely made a commitment, the Saints, that is, to involve their safeties. We've seen Darren Sharper. We've seen him on blitzes. We've seen him up around the line of scrimmage. We've seen the same from Roman Harper. You start doing that, you give more and more one-on-one -on -one opportunities, you know, for these Minnesota receivers on the outside. Saints call a timeout. That's their first one. They got that one back on the delay game. And Sean Payton is complaining to the official maybe that too much time came off the clock after they had signaled for a timeout. Minute 30 left. Saints can get a hold here on third down. They can get it back in the hands of Drew Brees. Try and get the lead. They've not led in this game for the end of the half. Protection right there. Play clock at three. Pump fake by Favre, and he throws it high for Barry and incomplete. It's fourth down. And the clock stops with 124 left. Pretty good job up front with Brett Favre being able to redirect the offensive line to make sure that the things were picked up that Favre wanted, and he was afforded great protection. He had a chance then on the outside. This is just one of those balls that sailed on him. You see Barry and he was in a good position on that sideline a ball down and away would have been an easy completion. Favre's now five for his last 12 throwing it. Chloe punts it. Reggie Bush try and return it. He muffs it. A loose ball and it's picked up by the Vikings. They'll take over at the 10. You cannot advance a muffed punt. But the Vikings will get the ball. Frampton was the one who made the hit. And the Vikings come away with the football as Kenny Onatolu, one of the very good special teams players, got his arms around it. You see, I, I couldn't tell if Frampton actually knocked it out of his hands or if, if Reggie Bush just did not make a clean catch on the punt. Yeah, it didn't look like he ever really had control of the ball, but Frampton was there to make the play regardless. And boy, what a turnover now, right before the end of this first half. Bush tried to force it. Frampton was in his face. And there's a turnover. First of the game, and the Vikings take over at the 10. And hand it off to Peterson. And Adrian Peterson will fight his way down inside the five yard line at second and goal. Cedric Ellis on the tackle. And a timeout is taken. 
with a minute left. Well, that's awfully tough there for that Saints defense. You know, they did a good job and they make a stop and. You know, because they're not able to secure the punt, Reggie Bush, you're gonna take a little better look at it here, and you see he never he never had it. It hit off his shoulder pads there on his chest. Frampton was there to make sure he wasn't able to regain it. And now the defense having to come right back out on the field. A great opportunity here for this Minnesota offense. An offense that has been awfully good in this part of the field throughout the year, and then last year or last week against Dallas also. Saints just took the timeout their second a minute left and we go down to Chris Myers in pregame warmups Joe Brian Murphy the special teams coach of the Vikings worked with Chris Cluey and they made it a point saying we'll sacrifice distance on punts for height because Reggie Bush has shown a propensity to fumble and obviously work to their advantage here. Reggie Bush has not been a factor for the most part in this game except for the turnover. his performance last week now it's Peterson who loses it and the Saints take over Fujita with the recovery for New Orleans yeah, and Adrian Peterson just never got the ball I don't know if, if Favre just didn't put it in his you know put it there in his pocket or if he just was unable to hang on to it. you take a better look at you see it is it hit his right arm and what happens is as a running back if you don't open up the the pocket then it makes it very difficult to try to put it in and it looked like Adrian was so concerned about where he was going to go with the football that he didn't give far a real clean pocket to place the ball into fumble is credited to Brett Favre and there's his reaction Adrian Peterson who fumbled seven times during the regular season 20 over the last three seasons didn't secure it. And so now the Saints have it with time left, the timeout remaining, and here's Reggie Bush. Deshaun Payton gets him involved right away after the muffed punt, and Bush takes it up just shy of the 15 yard line. Yeah, I mean, we saw what Reggie Bush did a week ago. Of course, he only had five carries, you know, in the running game, but 84 yards and was electric the way he was able to finish off those runs. I really anticipated coming into this game that they would feed him early and say hey is he going to come in with the same mindset that he showed a week ago and he hasn't had those opportunities. I think it was smart for Peyton to get him back involved after that fumble. You could see Brett Favre and read his lips. He said to Adrian Peterson hey the play's over. So's the half and a missed chance for the Vikings after taking over at the Saints 10. We're tied at 14 after a half here in the Superdome. Saints will get it to start this second half. And this is Roby. From inside the five, Courtney Roby bounces off a tackle, keeps going, trying to outrun Asher Allen. Roby inside the 40, and a good start to the half for the Saints. See Courtney Roby he just takes it up the middle and then everybody kind of relaxed right there just assuming that he was going to go to the ground. Troy there is a penalty flag all the way back at the five yard line. And it must have just fallen out. There's no foul on the play. There is no foul. And it is a 61 yard return by Courtney Roby to start the second half. Well a great way for New Orleans to start this second half with great field position and. You know, not bad blocking up front, but the contact was made on Roby. He was able to keep his feet, and then he was able to get the extra yards after Minnesota just relaxed in coverage with the two guys that were in a position to potentially make the tackle. Balls at the 37. Breeze sets up and throws and completes. That's David Thomas. And a good catch in traffic. Survived a hit and good for 17 yards. I put David Thomas. I've been impressed with what he's been able to do here. You know, in this game, he's going to motion across, and then he's just taking the middle of the field. You're going to see the two deep safeties and zone coverage there, and he gets in behind the linebacker, Chad Greenway, and that's that's the void in that zone coverage. Now it's going to be contested as it was there, but he's able to hang on to it. D. Williams gave him the hit, then tried to take it away. Thomas hung on. Here's Pierre Thomas. 
And a good run down inside the 15 yard line of six yards by Pierre Thomas. So second down and four. And a jolt to the start of this half provided by Courtney Roby. Quick snap count. Handoff is to Thomas, and he's got a first down. First and goal from inside the 10. Hey, we showed the catch that Dave Thomas made there in behind Chad Greenway. These last two running plays now, he is lined up in the fullback position, and he has been outstanding as a lead blocker. You know, a lot of times, those types of players that are tight ends, it's hard for them then to be put in the fullback position off the ball and make good blocks. But he's been good at, on the end of the line, and he's been excellent when he's been put at fullback, lead blocking there for Pierre Thomas. And once again, here he is. And Zach Streif, number 64, an extra offensive lineman in the game is Pierre Thomas. Carries it up the middle and extends for the touchdown. Put Zach Streif in and motion him right here. But watch the block by right guard Jari Evans and the job that he does and the push that he is then able to get. He gets a double with Jonathan Goodwin, but he's the one who creates the lane that allows Pierre Thomas to come off of his block and get in the end zone. Call was that Thomas broke the plane before his knee went down. It's a nine yard touchdown run. Second touchdown for Pierre Thomas. First lead of the game for the hometown New Orleans Saints. Like the knee was down before Thomas got the ball across the plane of the end zone, but touchdown is the call. Seven point lead for the Saints. And Percy Harvin is driven into the end zone to touchback. Let's go back to the touchdown for Pierre Thomas. You're going to see Pierre Thomas's left knee right there on the ground. The ball obviously well short of the goal line. It was about three quarters of a yard short at the time that his left knee hit the ground. It was a first down carry, first and goal from the nine. Saints catch that break. The Vikings open the game with back to back 10 play touchdown drives. Since then, four punts and a fumble. Now down by seven. Favre throws for Sidney Rice. Been relatively quiet except for the touchdown, and Rice has 13 yards and a first down brought down by Vilma. You talk about the job that New Orleans has done defensively after the early part of the game and the 14 points put up there by Minnesota, and they've done it without sacking Brett Favre. And it just points out that sometimes sacks don't tell the whole story because, as we've shown and as we know, Favre has, has taken a lot of hits in this game. Hand off to Adrian Peterson who fumbled late in the first half going sideways and gets a yard. Tracy Porter came up to make the stop. That's an excellent job by Tracy Porter. Darren Sharper again around the line of scrimmage. He's the one who Adrian Peterson initially makes miss but Tracy Porter out in the open field and I mean obviously not a great tackle but but a effective you know and doing what he had to do and then getting it cleaned up there by his teammates but a good job defensively fake the delayed handoff far down the middle wide open is Shanko and the tight end for the Vikings Visanti Shanko is inside the 40 yard line with a 26 yard gain. I can tell that New Orleans they're expecting run here and off the play action. This is what play action does for you. Watch those linebackers and they come off of it and they hit it. And once they hit it, there's nobody then in behind in order to pick up Shanko because they're in zone coverage. First catch of the day for a guy who had a great year. Shanko, 56 catches, a career high, and 11 touchdowns from Brett Favre. Now they do hand it off. And Adrian Peterson lost it. Tahi, the fullback, is in the middle of it. 
And they fight for the football at the bottom of the play, and it's Nafahu Tahi who saves the play for Minnesota. Vilma knocked it out, and Peterson puts it on the ground again. Yeah, Vilma does a good job of, of navigating his way through, and when he came in then to put the hit on Adrian Peterson, he's, he's able to knock it loose. He's going to come off the left side there, and, and the ball comes out. Boy, Minnesota dodges another one. Shanley had a great shot at it. There's Tahi. But a loss of 10, second and 20. Pump fake, wide open is Shanko again. And on second and 20, Visanti Shanko picks up 21 and a first down for Minnesota. Yeah, you ask yourself, how does Shanko get so wide open? Well, initially, you're going to get the linebacker, Fujita, who's going to carry it. Watch him right here. But they run an underneath route with Klein Saucer. And actually, it was Velma who jumps it, and then that gets Shanko in behind it. That's the area of the field right now that they're working because on passing downs, what we've seen from New Orleans is they're playing a little bit more coverage. In the middle of the field, then, is where you want to work it. Taylor at the bottom of your screen. Harvin in motion. Out of the shotgun, there's Harvin. Blocking in front of him, Percy Harvin to the 25. Second and five. Hand off to Taylor. And Chester Taylor, who was a 1,000 yard back the year before the Vikings drafted Adrian Peterson, gets three. And Adrian Peterson is standing on the sideline. A, he didn't get his arms open enough for the fumble at the end of the first half, and B, he just fumbled and there he stands. Yeah, well, I've talked to about it before and I asked Brad Childress actually going into last week's game, is there a situation in the game where you would not have confidence in Adrian Peterson? He said absolutely not. It's third down and two. They fake the handoff. Flip it for Shanko and Vasanti Shanko with a one handed catch. A brilliant grab by number 81. As he got behind Porter in a 20 yard completion. This is the exact same play that they ran to end the game last week against Dallas. Pretty simple, really. They're going to run it off play action. It gets away with the hole. Didn't matter. Shanko's able to, to make the catch, but they run him to the corner. They've got a, a fullback in the flat and a perfectly thrown ball by Brett Favre. Spoken like a true ex quarterback. How about that catch? That was that was okay. Okay. <laughs> First and goal. <laughs> Hand off. Peterson pounds it in for the touchdown. So Peterson back into the game. And he pops it into the end zone. And with the extra point coming, Red Favre gets a chance to catch his breath as we are on the verge of another tie. Well, they catch a break by recovering the fumble that Adrian Peterson put on the ground. And and they make the most of it. They're able to finish off this drive. And then with this extra point, tie up the game. Shanko with three catches for 67 yards on that drive. But it was Nafahu Tahi who recovered the fumble by Adrian Peterson that allowed all that to happen. See Tracy Porter, you see Adrian Peterson who's <laughs> holding on to the football on the sideline. High and tight. That's what these teams preach. I want to get back to that haircut by Tracy He's Porter. The ghosts from Pac-Man on <laughs> etched into his hair. Here's Breeze flushed out and just gets rid of it. Jared Allen with pressure. And Drew Breeze happy just to get rid of the football. Second and ten. Well, Jared Allen, they kind of let him get ahead of steam up, and then they expect David Thomas. Jared Allen's going to come right in here. And then he's got to try to slow him down with a little bit of help there, but not before it got to Drew Brees. He just had to unload it. Neither team has a sack so far in this championship game. Here's Reggie Bush out across the 40, good for six. You know, as we're playing in a tie game, third quarter, you start to think ahead. And if this game comes down to the right foot of either place kicker, 
The advantage is to the Minnesota Vikings. Ryan Longwell is a 13 year vet. 12 of 17 in his career during the playoffs. Meanwhile Garrett Hartley was suspended at the start of the season. It was 9 of 11 during the regular season. One for one last week against Arizona but limited experience. It's third down and four. Underneath pass is dropped incomplete to Reggie Bush on his hands and then off him. And it's a three and out. Well you look at what has happened now for New Orleans on third down. And I talked about it earlier in this game and saying how they wanted to get to third and manageable down in distances. And the last three prior to that third down they had not converted a third and one a third and two and then they failed on a third and four. And so they've been productive enough enough on early downs but they're not converting some of the easy third downs. This is interesting. It's against the Vikings. It's a first down. Ball start. Number 57. Kicking game. Five yard penalty still. Fourth down. Instead, they get the long snapper, Jason Kyle. So he's the center. Must have moved the football, which forced that movement. Let's look. A little flinch, and that's what this officiating crew saw. I think it's a good call and an important one for the Vikings. Who almost by penalty kept that Saints offense on the field. Good punt. Wow. Raynaud will return it from inside the five. Usually a no no, and that's why he gets to the 10, and that's it. Vikings start at their 10 and hand the ball to Peterson. Over the right side, a good carry by Adrian Peterson. Seven yard gain Vilma on the tackle. Peterson and Sharper get up talking to each other. Peterson has been involved. A couple of mishandles one on a fumble that was recovered by his teammate Tahi. He has 15 carries 53 yards two touchdowns three catches for Sidney Rice. And the other touchdown second and three. Delayed handoff. And he loses the football. Ball comes out, and the Vikings are back on top of it. Adrian Peterson lost it again. You, it was just unbelievable hustle on his part. You see where the ball is. Immediately, Roman Harper goes for it, gets it loose, but it's Adrian Peterson who beats about three defenders there for the Saints in order to recover that ball. And when it came loose, I mean, it didn't look like there was any way possible it wouldn't be Saints' ball. I wonder how Brad feels about playing him now. Play action from Favre, who floats it for Harvin out of his reach. Well, it'll be interesting to see. If Adrian Peterson, I mean, he, he's been the feature of this offense for for two and a half years. He started the season brilliantly. That's tapered off his production, and he's back to his old ways of putting it on the ground. Well, I made the comment in the middle of the season, Joe, that it really spoke to how great he was that a coach would tolerate the fumbles that he has had. But he hasn't been that great over the second half of the season. He hasn't been that great here today. That being the case you can't take a chance on a turnover in a game like this. Twenty two fumbles over the last three seasons and here's Chester Taylor. Roman Harper on the tackle a gain of five and the oddity for Adrian Peterson is he's notorious for having a death grip handshake that brings people almost to their knees when he meets somebody. He's got extremely strong hands but he can't hang on to the ball. Yeah and what happens you know I mean normally it's when he's fighting for extra yards is when he's put the ball on the ground but you know guys know that he puts it on it so they're going after him and right now they've got Artis Hicks at left guard Steve Hutchinson the all pro is not in the game. Third down and five. Farb in trouble floats it out of the reach of Chester Taylor but a flag comes down and it was Hargrove who ended up on top of Farb. Personal foul roughing the passer number 69 15 yard penalty automatic 
first down. That is the third personal foul, but Troy Brett Favre doesn't look healthy as he staggers around and now squats down at the 30 yard line. You see Hargrove he comes right inside and I, I think that was a bad call you know I mean he's in contact with Favre and he's just making a tackle at the end of the play. I mean that's the way they teach Pop Warner kids how to make the tackle and I know that they say you can't drive the quarterback into the turf and I'm all for that but that was a guy who got engaged had his arms around Favre's waist went to the ground tackled him. I don't agree with that call. Well, there was, I, I disagree. There was a lifting of Brett Favre, and then Hargrove did drive him into the turf. Here's Barryan with a catch, and a good play is made out on the edge by Jabari Greer. I mean, this seems to me, you know, all the ticky tack fouls we see week after week with a hand getting up into the face mask or off the helmet of a quarterback. Here's a lift and a drive into the ground. I, I, I think that's a good call. Yeah, I don't. I don't because Favre's falling back as he's making that throw and Hargrove is just making the tackle. He doesn't know that the ball's out. And if the quarterback leaves his feet, he naturally then is going to fall on his back and it's going to look like he was driven to the turf. I just think that in a game like this, one that was that close, the fact that you and I are even having a conversation about it, shouldn't have been called. Came on third down and it gave the Vikings a first down. What will it lead to? Here's a pass caught. That's Barry and who's been busy. 12 yards and a first down. So file that play away. Anthony Hargrove with a personal foul. Favre staggered around after that personal foul and now he's still throwing bullets. I don't know how he keeps getting up and and going into the huddle and getting up to the line. You know we showed that Artis Hicks had to go in there for Steve Hutchinson at left guard. Steve Hutchinson is now back in the game but that pressure that led to the controversial penalty came over that left side. You know they brought two guys one by McKinney one by Hicks. Both of them were able to get to far. Hand off is to Chester Taylor. No Adrian Peterson and Chester Taylor gets two Remy Adele. On well, the tackle. Yeah, and, and you know, we talk about Chester Taylor. You talked about prior to Adrian Peterson coming here, he was a thousand yard runner. I mean, he's an accomplished guy. I mean, sometimes you watch him run and you you really got to take a hard look and say, who was that? Because he finishes runs a lot like what Adrian Peterson does. Favre still smiling. Eighth play of the drive. Second and eight, and he's picked off. That's Vilma. Favre needs help getting off the field. Jonathan Vilma comes up with the interception. Saints have it. They're looking at the left lower leg of Brett Favre as he got a hit from Remy Adele up high and Bobby McRae down low. And it's the hit by McRae to the left leg that hurt Brett Favre. Vilma the interception his fourth over his last eight games and now it's Pierre Thomas. Out across the 35 back to the hit and the interception. Well here's Remy Adele they're going to run a twist there and Bobby McRae is going to be the one who comes low on him but good job up front there on the twist Remy Adele you see Bobby McRae come down low and then on the back end it was Jonathan Velma who initially was going to go in coverage with Jim Kleinsaucer but he fell back off of that route when he read Brett Favre's eyes and was able to then make a play on the ball. Brett Favre has not been sacked. But he has been hit 11 times and they have come after him from the beginning of this game. Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, hand off to Pierre Thomas over the right side, a gain of three. Third down coming up. And they'll rewrap the left ankle of Favre as we come up on a minute left in this third quarter, tied at 21. Well, I've got to believe Tavares Jackson's over there on the sideline somewhere getting loosened up but the way they're taping up Brett Favre it looks like uh, he, he, he'll be coming back out into the game and, and that's got to be awfully difficult to all Favre. the wives yeah all the wives and moms who watch their husbands and sons come out here and play every week it's third down and three and that 
play blown dead with a false start third down and eight. We'll get the call. Ball start. Number 76 offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. So center Goodwin. Let's go down to Chris Myers. Joe, uh, he was motioning, Brett was, to the trainer that he was hit from across the left side of the knee. It is a lower left ankle. They took off the shoe. They wrapped it. He told Daryl Bevel, the offensive coordinator, I'm going I'm to come back in. He, he was grabbing his sock, wincing in pain when they first took his shoe off, but it apparently is a left ankle injury. He expects to go back in. His recuperative powers over the years have been almost inhuman. He's making his 309th consecutive start here tonight. Third down and eight. Play clock is at one. Saints just get it away, and Breeze throws high incomplete. And it's fourth down. Meacham, the intended receiver. And, and New Orleans got away with one there. Cedric Griffin, he was in coverage on Meacham, and with the with the ball sailing on Breeze, he was in a position to actually make this interception. You're going to see at the end of this throw, Cedric Griffin then comes off of it and has a chance had he been able to locate that ball a little bit earlier. Morstead will punt it. Darius Raynaud who fielded a punt from inside the five the last time a New Orleans native. A ton of family and friends in attendance. Calls for a fair catch and calls for it early. Takes it in around the 16. I don't know if the legend can grow anymore. There he is back on the field. It's officially a left ankle injury. And the handoff is to Percy Harvin. He loses the ball and gets it right back. And Percy Harvin looks like he has enough for a first down. He does. You know, even this handoff, this exchange was a little bit difficult. Here he is coming, you know, out onto the field. And you can, you know, clearly it's bothering him. They they retaped it, so he's going to have limited mobility, you know, in that ankle. And they come out with a stretch play, and that's one of the most taxing handoffs that a quarterback can have. <laughs> he, he, he struggled to get out there and make that. Well, in the real world of the NFL, he's even more of a target back there for this Saints defense. Handoff to Harvin, and he loses the ball. Ball still loose. Saints in a position and picked up by Remy Adele. Joe, it looked like by the design of the play that. It was intended to come back to the left side. That's how they were blocking it up. Will Smith, though, he holds his ground. He's the one who's able to come in and knock it loose out of the hands of Percy Harvin. You know, the Vikings have just been entirely too careless with the football here in this game. They've fumbled Troy five times. That's the second ball they've lost on a fumble. Plus, Favre has thrown an interception. And it sets up the Saints with first and goal. At the seven. Pierre Thomas inside the five. Remember what we told you, Greg Williams, a defensive coordinator of the Saints, said to us on Friday our defense is not dominant enough with a front seven that we have to be a great defense without takeaways and what we do in the red zone. And they have taken it away three times in this game. And when they struggled at the end of the season, Joe, there were two games there down the stretch where they did not get a takeaway. And those were the only two games all season where that happened. They were opportunistic last week in their win against Arizona, and they've been able to force turnovers here in this game. Here's Thomas, left side. What a good play made by the safety, Tyrell Johnson. I think if you look at what has happened here in this second half from New Orleans the defense has really done a good job because we pointed out the Saints have have not converted a lot of their third downs. They only had 10 plays there in the third quarter 50 yards total. So Greg Williams and his defense has, has done a good job. They give the ball to the offense down here and for the Saints I mean they need to capitalize if the Vikings are able to hold them here this is going to be a great job on their part. Saints are two for seven on third down. It's third and goal. Breeze. 
Can't find anywhere to go with it. Now does. And no touchdown. The catch by Reggie Bush, and they're going to mark him short. Inches short, and it's fourth and goal. Well, what a good job by Tyrell Johnson of making the hit right there. And, and that's worth oh. a challenge because it looked to me like it was inside the pylon. I agree. That should be a touchdown. And a challenge coming from Sean Payton. Here's the call. After reviewing the play, the receiver broke the plane of the goal line. It's the Percy Harvin fumble that leads to it. And Reggie Bush, fifth touchdown in four career postseason games. As the call's overturned, the ball has to be inside the pylon. It was. And the Saints regain the lead. And turn the turnover into points. It's up to Garrett Hartley to make it seven points. After the Harvin fumble, the Saints get it in thanks to Reggie Bush. The Saints, fourth quarter during the regular season. By far the best team in the NFL. They scored more points and allowed fewer points than any other team. And they get seven here, lead 28 21. Drew Brees with three touchdown passes in the game, and the Vikings will start at their 20. Well, we got to talk about the offensive line and the job that they've done today. They've not given up a sack. Drew Brees has time in the pocket. That's why they're able to get this touchdown. He's looking around. Reggie Bush was about his fourth or fifth receiver that he went to in that progression. And Reggie Bush does a great job here. He sees Brees scrambling. He turns and looks and decides, where do I have to go to get away from defenders to get open for my quarterback? He takes off then to the sideline. Brees finds him. And they get the touchdown. But a great game so far by this Saints offensive line giving Drew Brees protection and then also doing a good job within the run blocking on first down Favre gets it to Chester Taylor and Taylor is spun around by Fujita gain of three now you kind of get the idea right now that that score really re-energized this crowd and there you know a little bit of a momentum shift clearly in that if if Minnesota doesn't do something with this drive and they and the Saints are able to force a three and out I see momentum right now with New Orleans that offensively you know they could extend this lead pretty good second and seven Peterson back in the game he gets it here on second down spins away. Adrian Peterson with his biggest run of the game gets a hit at midfield and for Peterson a 27 yard carry and a smile. Yeah, you got Roman Harper the safety he comes up and then the corner Jabari Greer is in a position to make the tackle as well. But Adrian Peterson is just able to make both of those guys miss Jabari comes in late after the miss there by Harper and. You know, the one thing that we have noticed from Adrian Peterson over the years is when he has put the ball on the ground, he comes back with a vengeance. He's an angry runner anyway, but he gets really angry when he's had some mistakes that he feels has cost his team. That's his longest run in nine games, 27 yards. Play action. Far down the middle and nearly picked off. Sidney Rice may have helped avoid the interception by Jabari Greer. Now there's a little bit of pressure on Favre at the end, but you know overall not bad. It was just a ball that that Favre thought he could fit in, and, and Greer was in a great position and came underneath. Sidney Rice needs to try to do what he can to, to break that one up, but that's the first throw that I've seen from Brett Favre in a long time to where you say, gosh, you know what was he thinking? But he got away with one on that play. On second down, Favre backpedaling and his receiver had fallen down. Chester Taylor 
Saints won a flag, but Taylor was there. He just was on the ground. There is no flag on the field. Now will they throw it? Here's Pete Morelli. He announces that Chester Taylor was there. It's third and ten. And again, Favre took a hit. Yeah, this time there was a lot of pressure there. Scott Fujita, he's coming off the edge, and then Jeff Charleston, he's been used in some of these passing downs as well. He's the one who got home. Never louder. Favre guns it for Barry, and who comes to the ball and makes a catch. Big completion on third and ten by Brett Favre of 30 yards to Bernard Barry, and who's having his biggest game of the season. Boy, he sure is, and, and a ball that Favre had to use every ounce of arm strength that he had because he's thrown out of position, and and Barry, and you know this was a ball that was thrown to the inside. He had to go in and get it, and that's exactly what he did. You got Randall Gay who was in position, but he had, he did not have his head turned looking at the ball. Really nice play there by Bernard Berrien. Seven catches, 83 yards for Berrien. Handoff is to Adrian Peterson, who carries it for three. Well, I spoke a moment ago about the momentum shift and, and how this crowd had gotten re-energized. We'll see what ultimately happens on this possession. Clearly, right now, they're in field goal range, but. But they've recaptured what they had lost. The Vikings have. You know, this crowd obviously still loud, but they're not in the frenzy that they were just a few moments ago when this drive started. Quick setup and throw. Pass is caught. Ball is out. Another fumble. Berrien knocked out by Tracy Porter, and the Saints have it. Four Viking turnovers in this game. Vilma comes away with the recovery. That's something that Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, and this entire defensive staff emphasizes every single day in practice. Whether it's making a play on the ball in the air, going after the ball, once a receiver or running back has it in their possession, he knocks it out right there. Tracy Porter with his left hand. That's two turnovers now by Minnesota in the red zone. Not only in the red zone, shoot, inside the 10 yard line. That's six fumbles by the Vikings, three they've lost, plus the interception, and the Saints defense doing what it's done all year take the ball away. Saints take over at their five. And off is to Pierre Thomas. Looking for somewhere to go. And Pierre Thomas picks up three. Pat Williams on the stop for the Vikings. You know, the thing that's that's so surprising about this, I mean, we talk about Brett Favre and some of the interceptions that he's had over his career, and you you know that at any time that you know there could be a three, four interception game, but that's not been the case. And in in this Minnesota team has been so good all season long in protecting the football third best in the NFL during the regular season protecting the ball with only 18 turnovers. But four here in the NFC Championship game which has derailed their effort at least at the moment second and seven pass is caught by Henderson and Devery is brought down by Griffin gain of five third and short coming up. Here's a spot for the Minnesota defense as they need on third and two to come up with a stop. Try and get the ball right back with eight and a half to go in the ball game. Yeah, I think overall, I mean, I, I think Minnesota defensively is, has done a good job today. Now the ball's out. Breeze picks it up. The ball is in the midsection of Drew Breeze, and that will make him short of the first down. And so the Vikings hold its fourth down. Well, another missed opportunity on on third and short. They, you know, and this one comes at the expense of not getting the exchange from the center. In another situation similar to last week, you got the center working to the left, and and the quarterback Drew Brees 
you never know exactly why the exchange doesn't take place, but as the quarterback with a center working away against a big offensive lineman or a big defensive lineman, you got to hang in there just a tick longer. Well, this will be a challenge. It's challenging the ruling on the field that the runner crossed and made a first down. Breeze finally got the ball, went toward the 15. The ball was back in the middle part of his body, but a challenge from Sean Payton. Meanwhile, they yanked Drew After Brees back. The, play, the ruling on the field will stand. Fourth down. I mean, that really wasn't all that close and pretty clear cut. And so now New Orleans, not only do they lose a timeout, but they are out of challenges for the rest of this game. They were successful on their first on the Reggie Bush touchdown. Unsuccessful here, and that was a waste on two fronts. Now it's fourth down, and the punt will be coming from Morstead with Raynaud waiting for it. Short punt. Takes a decent New Orleans bounce, but great field position. Starting at their own 43 cut back run Peterson hanging on to the football and a nice gain on first down of four yards. Second down and six Favre throws Sidney Rice incomplete good play by Greer. And these are very underrated corners here with the New Orleans Saints. Third and six. Favre. Shanko. Big completion on third and six. And Vasanti Shanko takes it down inside the 40. Troy, you and I talked that somebody did a good job of scouting Vasanti Shanko, who was Shockey's backup with the Giants. His career high was 12 catches. Before they brought him to Minnesota. Good route right here. He's able to get off Roman Harper. Roman Harper is in man coverage on him, and you know he overplayed it. And you're right. I mean, sometimes guys get labeled, and when he was backing up Shockey, as you said, he wasn't a big part of their their receiving game. But he came here, and each year that he has been here, his receiving totals have increased. All of his catches this half. Four for 83 yards. Play action from Favre on first down. Able to get rid of it as again he ends up on the ground. Chester Taylor, the intended receiver. And there was pressure by Anthony Hargrove. Yeah, Anthony Hargrove's doing a pretty good job right here in the middle. And he's going to get help there from the, or the center there is the one who's trying to hold him up. But Hargrove is the one when you get that inside pressure we talked about it that it's awfully hard then for a quarterback to escape. You can deal with it off the edges but in the middle you don't like it. Second and ten. Delayed handoff Adrian Peterson right up the middle lost his footing hangs on to the ball. Saints still going after it Roman Harper on the tackle trying to rip it out and it's an 18 yard run Yeah, just straight lead draw and Nofahu Tahi the fullback he's going to lead block here and then a down block by the right guard Anthony Herrera pretty nice hole right there for Adrian Peterson first time Peterson's been over 100 yards rushing in nine games. Favre floats it. Berrien end zone incomplete and a flag comes in and it's pass interference against Tracy Porter. Pass interference number 22 defense the foul occurred in the end zone by rule the ball be placed in the one yard line automatic first down. And Tracy Porter he just gets turned completely around and then Bernard Berrien just trying to make a play on the ball and, and you know, that was the right call. It's awfully hard on these defensive backs. The ball in the air. The ball's thrown to the inside. You're out of position. You're not making a play looking back. And as the receiver then goes for the ball, invariably there's contact. The disparity in penalties. Nine against the Saints. 
Handoff is to Peterson. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Lost about half a yard. First guy there was Anthony Hardgrove. Five and a half to play, second and goal. And Brett Favre, who came out of last week's win over the Dallas Cowboys, saying, This is what I came back for. Didn't sign until August. Had one of his best seasons, if not his best, over a 19 year NFL career. Trying to tie this game. Well, they've been down here a couple times and have had nothing to show for it. They're hoping to come away with points now. Second and goal. Peterson pounds it to the goal line and in. Touchdown, Minnesota. Adrian Peterson has his third of the day. A two yard run. And with the extra point coming, we're on our way to 28 28. Good job right here by Sullivan and, and Herrera, the right guard. So you get the dynamic running ability of Adrian Peterson. You live with the two fumbles. He has three rushing touchdowns in this game and 120 yards. 22 carries and we're tied the reaction of Brett Favre after the touchdown run by Adrian Peterson and Brett Favre has played psychologist at times in this game for Adrian Peterson who has fumbled twice in this game little huddle called by Drew Brees who is the unquestioned leader of this Saints team offense defense you name it. And with under five to play, the Vikings, their defense held on third down and short. They got it back. They took it down the field. Seven play drive. Pass interference call set it up at the one. And now the Saints and Drew Brees about to get it back. Playing football in the Superdome since 1975. Never hosted an NFC championship game. This one's been worth the wait. Courtney Roby from inside the five. Cannot get to the 20. They're still unpiling after that kick return by Roby. And Roby finally gets up and limps off the field. There have been four Super Bowls in this building, there have been Final Fours. Bowl games, championship fights. This is another championship fight. Tied 28 28 with 452 left. Yeah, and there's no question that New Orleans, what they would like to do here is go into their four minute offense, meaning, you know, you get first downs, move the ball down the, down the field, take time off the clock, and do everything they can to come away with points without giving the ball back to the Minnesota Vikings. Over 70,000 in this stadium. As Breeze lost the football. Jari Evans was there to fall back on top of it for the Saints. It was knocked out, and Jari Evans, the all pro guard, fell on top of it. It looked like it was Ray Edwards that came in off the edge and was able to come underneath in the block by John Stinchcomb and knock that one loose. But you know, great awareness by the Saints being able to get back on that ball once it did come out. That is the first sack by either team in this game a loss of eight second and 18 and a big play by Ray Edwards who was so good against the Cowboys last week. Playing with a sprained knee. This one is in the arms of Pierre Thomas and Pierre Thomas can get to the 11 that's it Lieber made the play. And it's third and 18 coming up in a game that's seen four ties and neither team is led by more than a touchdown yeah, and I, I don't know that we can say enough of the job that Minnesota has done defensively I mean they've been very good there has not been a lot of offensive production by New Orleans here in this second half and it points out the job once again done by Leslie Frazier who has been terrific in organizing and guiding this defense for the Vikings. Three years in a row they led the NFL defending the run number two this year. Their guys tee off in this situation third and 18. Breeze backpedals throws completes short of a first down to Debrie Henderson. 
A 16 yard completion and if nothing else it buys a little breathing room for the punter Thomas Morstead. Well, yeah I mean a, a lot of breathing room and, and then probably more importantly for New Orleans is they're able to regain field position because if they had not have been able to get that completion even though they were short they're going to give the ball back to Minnesota with great field position. Morstead punts a beauty high hanging punt. This is Raynaud on the return to the 22 that's it. Minnesota has well over 400 yards here of offense they have moved the football and now the challenge is going to be short of a takeaway can New Orleans stop him here on this drive. Start with a run over the right side. No gain for Adrian Peterson, maybe half a yard. Minnesota Vikings are 0 4 in NFC Championship games since their last Super Bowl, which happened in January of 77 when they lost to Oakland. Kenny Stabler, Belitnikoff, the MVP. Trying to stamp their ticket for a trip to Miami. And a date with the Colts. Two minute warning. Tied at 28. Trip to the Super Bowl. And an NFC championship on the line. Second and 10. Delayed handoff. Peterson not much there. Vilma made the tackle. A gain of two. And now a timeout is taken by the Saints. Remember, they lost a timeout on that challenge. Ill advised challenge by Sean Payton. He challenged the spot of the football on a Drew Brees carry. So they have the Saints only one timeout remaining. There's such a disparity between the two field goal kickers involved in this game. Longwell in the regular season and postseason 411 career field goals Hartley Garrett Hartley has 25 and you look at the season long and career long. For Ryan Longwell. Third and eight. Throws Barry and makes the catch and now has to fight has a first down. He has a fumble in this game. He went around Porter and picked up 10 and a huge first down. Yeah, Greg Williams he elects to bring pressure. They come off the edge here and he's hoping that Barb has to get the ball out. But then you'll make the tackle. You know once the completion is made and Porter was in a position if he makes this tackle right at the point of the catch then Barry and would have been short of the first down. Now Minnesota spends their first time out as they have a first down at the 33 yard line. There's Ziggy Wilf. His fifth year as owner of this Minnesota Vikings team. They have a good setup in place with Rick Spielman the general manager and their head coach Brad Childress. But Farb is the difference. On first down, Brett Favre throws and he hits Sidney Rice in stride. The Vikings will not use a timeout. They'll get up to the line of scrimmage, a 19 yard completion to Sidney Rice. A perfectly thrown ball by Brett Favre. Handoff is to Chester Taylor. Chester Taylor takes it down inside the 35. And right now, the Vikings are already on the outer edge of field goal range for Ryan Longwell. With a minute six remaining, and the Vikings spend their second timeout. There's that throw, Randall Gay is on Sidney Rice, and you see where the ball was placed. Randall Gay was actually in good coverage and, and could have made a play on it, but a perfect thrown pass. And at the end of this right here, you see Chester Taylor. I mean he's got one thing in mind and that is just protect the football and don't lay it on the ground. 
New Orleans just used their final timeout. It's first down for Minnesota. And this crowd, which has been deafening all afternoon and evening, will try and crank it back up as we play during a postseason that has been rough on kickers. Percentage is down under 60%. Be a 51 yard try from this spot. They stay on the ground, handed to Chester Taylor. No gain. Again, this would be inside the season long and career long for Ryan Longwell. Ryan Longwell was hitting from 52 consistently during the pregame. Second down and 10. Vikings have two timeouts. Peterson back in the game at tailback. And he gets it over the right side. Nothing. Remy Adele out there to make the stop. And now with 19 seconds remaining, the Vikings take a timeout. 19 seconds left in regulation. I think this is an interesting call right here for offensive coordinator Daryl Bevel as to whether or not he's comfortable just trying to run the ball and take their chances then from this distance or however many yards they can pick up, or if they want to try to, to get more and make it. A much higher percentage kick. And now a penalty flag comes in. Both men in the huddle. Offense, five penalty, two or three and so now you're backed up just outside that range that we just talked about. I think the Vikings Troy are almost compelled to try and throw the ball here. Well I think now they have to and, and I think what we'll see from New Orleans defensively is that they're going to bring pressure and try to make Favre get the ball out of his hands. I think they're going to try to do what they did on the previous third down. You know in Minnesota's attempt to try to fool New Orleans on personnel and confuse them they end up then taking the penalty. Third down and 15. Favre sprints to his right, throws back across the middle, and he's intercepted. Porter. The return by Porter, and he's brought down with seven seconds left. Rolling to his right Troy and throwing across his body into the middle of the field. It's the first thing they teach him not to do but you're going to see Brett Favre as he rolls out if he just runs with it. He's got open field he's going to pick up 10 maybe 15 yards then they're obviously in field goal range instead he tries to make a play. This is the cardinal sin for any quarterback throwing back across the grain as you're rolling to your right. You cannot see defenders that are then coming underneath in pursuit. And Porter there to make the interception and Favre knows he made a huge mistake huge mistake didn't keep it the Vikings do have a timeout left so they could have run it. That's five turnovers for Minnesota. Brett Favre with two interceptions in the game. And now one second is left on the clock the two teams rough it up a little bit. And it'll be second down as we're one second away from overtime. Ray Edwards in the middle of it with Jerry Evans. You know, just pretty remarkable, you know, for Favre with as much ground. It was a good call. It was a good, excellent call by Daryl Bevel. Roll the quarterback out, let him have everything out in front of him. Not only receivers, but open field that he very easily could have taken. Wow. Last play barring a defensive penalty and Breeze just gets rid of it and we are headed to overtime. This is heads. This is tails. You're the visitor. You'll make the call. Heads. Heads. Can we spread out a little bit? 
Tails, you won the toss. You won the seat. Into overtime we go. The NFC side for the second time over the last three years. This season, the home team is eight and five. The team winning the coin toss seven and six. Point toss winner scoring on the first possession five times. An inexperienced kicker for the Saints, remember. Roby was injured the last time he returned to kick, so Pierre Thomas is waiting deep. Off we go. From the goal line, Pierre Thomas. Room to run. Stumbled a bit as he got across the 35, but great starting field position after a 40 yard return. Abdullah on the tackle for Minnesota. And the market just short of the 39 yard line. Pierre Thomas, he just takes it straight up the field. A great job by that kickoff return team a huge return he probably gets a little bit more yardage had he have not have stumbled but a great way to start this overtime possession player is down on the field a Minnesota Viking we go back to Brett Favre he threw the interception in overtime the last time he was in an NFC championship game and it was the New York Giants Corey Webster who picked him off his last throw is a Green Bay Packer Brett Favre had thrown 84 interceptions over his last four years coming into this season. 22 last year with the Jets. There's the day for Drew Brees. Three touchdowns, 15 of 26. He'll start at the Saints 39. They start with a run. It's Pierre Thomas. Saints with just 77 yards since halftime. And that's saying something against this New Orleans offense, the highest scoring offense in the NFL. And there is the second year pro Garrett Hartley, who has attempted just 25 kicks in the NFL. There's his career long last year. You know, this game, and you, you look at the Saints defensively give, giving up 475 yards of offense in this game, but they did what they've done all year long, and that is force takeaways. Second and seven. Again, it's a run. This time, it's Reggie Bush. He gets a yard. The crowd is groaning, saying, where's this high-flying offense and the passing attack of Drew Brees? Yeah, you know, on first down, they brought in their sixth offensive lineman, Zach Streak. You know, that's where they're heavy with the running game, and so they ran it on first down, didn't get anything out of it. You know, I expected them to come out and throw it as well. They, they've just not been good on this down today, and that's been one of the differences for them and why they haven't had more yards here in this second half. On third down and six, Breeze with protection throws penalty flag as Colston makes the catch. He made the catch over the rookie Asher Allen, but a flag is down. I think they're going to get Asher Allen with with pass interference. He was holding Marcus Colston as he came off the line. Really on the field as the pass is incomplete. However, holding. Number 21 in the defense. Five yard counter automatic first down. So again, the pass is incomplete. That ball came out when Colston went to the ground. But they'll accept the penalty, and it's an automatic first down as Asher Allen, the rookie, was guilty of the hold. And Allen's out there with the injury to Cedric Griffin. So now the Vikings, Troy, are sitting here in overtime as you watch the ball hit the ground. Here are the Vikings trying to slow down the Saints. They're without Cedric Griffin, and they're having to play Antoine Winfield on the inside with Benny Sapp on the outside. Breeze somehow got rid of the ball, incomplete. Big pressure by Ray Edwards, and David Thomas could not make the catch, second and ten. Yeah, Ray Edwards is the one who comes in and then gets the hit on Drew Breeze, and, and, and that's what Minnesota has to have. You know, they've got to be able to now get pressure on on. Breeze, unlike they have throughout this game because of the injuries, as you just mentioned. I mean, they're short-handed right now out there. They've got Asher Allen, the rookie, as you said, and then they and they still got Winfield, who, 
you know isn't a hundred percent either. Antoine Winfield's in the slot. Across from Colston missed six games with a broken foot. They go to Colston and the ball comes out it drops incomplete and the Vikings had a chance at an interception. Ben Lieber was there defending and after the ball was flipped up into the air by Marcus Colston let's see who had a chance at it. That ball is live in the air and it was Tyrell Johnson who could not secure it. It was a little bit like that that previous catch with the penalty on Asher Allen that you know not an easy catch to make but one that we've seen Marcus Colston make throughout his career. But he did have it initially into his hands but he just was not able to secure the ball. It's third down and ten. Blitz coming. Saints pick it up. Breeze pulls it back, throws a bobble, a catch. Depends on the spot, Devery Henderson. And we'll get a measurement. Well, Devery Henderson does a great job. Once the Vikings bring pressure, now you know there's got to be some holes in that defense. And Devery Henderson at the top of this route, he works to get open. He moves so there's a window that Drew Brees can see through and put the ball on him. And even he bobbled it. If he doesn't bobble it, he probably picks up the first down. I've got to believe, regardless of what this is, he's short. We thought that he was, that the Saints here will go for it. As well as Minnesota has moved the ball, you, you certainly don't want to have to punt it back to them. So it's fourth down in inches. And this tremendous run defense of the Vikings will line up and try to come up with a stop. Now we have a whistle. And we're going to get a review, I believe, of the spot of the football. I thought it was a good spot for the New Orleans Saints. In other words, it looked like a very favorable spot compared to where Devery Henderson was when he came down, and they're going to look and make sure that either A, it wasn't a first down, yeah. or B, that they're actually as close as they say they are. Well, that's a good point because, yeah, I mean, I think the, I think the review booth is, you know, they're reviewing it to see. And that's a that's a pretty good spot right there. But you're right. Had had that have been further back, then they would have moved it back, and it would have been further than what it is. But that right there, that's close. I mean, I don't know that there's anything there that they can they can move it. I mean, we saw the yellow line, but but that certainly is close as to where they will spot this ball. I don't know that Henderson. Maybe you could say was touched on his way going to the ground once he secured the catch. After reviewing the play, we were reviewing. Where Forward progress is made. The ruling on the field will stand. Please set the play clock to 34 seconds. Think about a lot of the great players who have come and gone in a New Orleans Saints uniform, and I think that list may start with the name Archie Manning, but some good players. This franchise is in a position here, Troy, to get to their first Super Bowl. Well, and to do that, they've got to pick this up. And you know I, I've always thought the best play in this situation is a quarterback sneak because there's so many bodies it's hard for that official not to give you the first down if you run the sneak when you take it off the line of scrimmage you risk a lot of penetration inside. Hand off to Pierre Thomas. Depends on the spot look like he picked it up. First down. But Pierre Thomas, he decides to go over the top, and, and this was close. This was close. They got the penetration down low. Pat Williams, you know, a lot of times those defensive linemen in the middle, they just go to the ground to keep from getting pushed out, and Pierre Thomas anticipating that, then went over the top of the pile. Now they're going to review that last play. The hit by Greenway put his helmet on the football. I don't know how Pierre Thomas Troy maintained possession of the ball as he came down, but he did. And initially they ruled a first down. We'll get the official call now from Morelli. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field will stand. First down.
Yeah, I'm with you, Joe. It, it's a it's a wonder that Pierre Thomas was able to to hang on to that ball with Greenway putting his helmet right on it. It was close, but I, I don't know what kind of angle. I mean, it, it certainly wasn't apparent that he didn't make it, and I don't I just don't think there's any way they could overturn that call. Saints are still not inside field goal range. Drew Brees backpedaling gets rid of it and the pass incomplete but a flag comes in. Lieber was covering David Thomas. That was just Drew Brees trying to keep a play alive and then just give his guy a chance and. I'm sure Minnesota's trying to argue that it was a ball that was uncatchable. Pass interference. Defense. Automatic first down. Let's take another look. The ball was well over the head of the receiver. Breeze backpedaling David Thomas, and that's Lieber out there in coverage. I think you can make a strong case that that ball wasn't catchable. Lieber never got his head around. And on the overthrow, a pass interference call, and now the Saints are inside field goal range. You know, it was kind of hard to tell even how much contact actually took place because of where the throw was. It, you know, you could argue that Dave Thomas was trying to make a play on the ball, and that's why he fell back. Here's a toss to Reggie Bush, and a big play is made by Ben Lieber, who was just flagged for interference. A loss of four on the tackle by Ben Lieber. Well, they got the penetration up the field. They you know, try to bounce something out wide, and, and if you're not able then to get, you know, on the edge, then you risk losing significant yards, and that's what happened. Garrett Hartley in his second year was suspended to start the season. John Carney started the year. It's 13 of 17. Doesn't have the range of Garrett Hartley, but certainly has the experience over Hartley. Play clock was at one. Second and 14, and the pass is caught. Catch is made by Robert Meacham, a gain of 12. Oh. He almost lost it going to the ground. Well, and I think part of it is, Joe, what I'm noticing from Drew Brees here, especially on this last possession, is he's not throwing the ball with a great deal of authority. I mean, the ball's coming out funny right there. You see it, not a tight spiral like what you're accustomed to seeing. And that's close to not being a catch, you know, whether or not he had full possession of the ball as he goes to the ground. But I think that's one of the reasons why we've seen Marcus Colston and, and Meacham here and then Devery Henderson bobble those balls that, you know, Breeze is not throwing it with the same authority as what you, you are used to seeing him throw it. Meacham was losing the ball going to the ground. Looked like at the end of the catch there was a trap of the ball against the ground and against the leg of Meacham. Here's a look, and they are reviewing the call. So a shrewd timeout taken by the Vikings. And it's up to Pete Morelli to determine whether that ball was secured, and he secured it throughout the catch going to the ground. See a little movement when that ball hits the ground and it's a smart timeout by Brad Childress. Well I you know the other looks that I had seen it looked like they would come back and rule it an incompletion that last shot that we just showed. It looked to me then. That he that he did have possession. And here comes the call. After reviewing the play the ruling on the field will stand it is catch. So now it's third and three at the 22. And you're talking about a 40 yard field goal try from this spot. Well within the range of Garrett Hartley the 23 year old out of Oklahoma. Three of the eight plays have been reviewed in this overtime. And the Saints are three of 11 on third down in this game. Complete. No penalty flag. The coverage by Tyrell Johnson on David Thomas. It's fourth and three. And here comes the moment Garrett Hartley has always dreamed of. 40 yard drive.
Timeout taken by Minnesota. Hartley sends the Saints to the Super Bowl.